Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today is lesson number 18, and it's all about L-tyrosine, the supplement, and we're going to be discussing whether or not it actually helps with your thyroid and your adrenal function. So let's jump in and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more. So what exactly is L-tyrosine, and does supplementing with it actually help uh, any of these things that we've just talked about? So L-tyrosine is a synthetic version of a protein in your body called tyrosine. So L-tyrosine is just the way that we manipulate it so that we can provide it to you in a supplement form. So the question really is, what is tyrosine? Now tyrosine is a protein in your body, and this image will help us understand that. So tyrosine is a protein in your body, and it's important because it forms the backbone of some critical hormones uh, that your body needs to create. And so they're all right here. So melanin is one of those. This is the melanin is the thing that provides pigment to your skin, protects you from ultraviolet radiation, and, and so on. Uh, this is a thing that increases when you get a tan. Uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, those are produced by your adrenal um, glands, and those are the things that your body produces in response to stress. To stress. And then lastly, and probably one of the things we're going to be focusing on here, is tyrosine also gets converted to thyroxine, which is T4, the thyroid hormone. So you can see here, tyrosine plays a very important role in creating several important hormones. So here's, here's the idea. If tyrosine is low, then your, the amount of substrate that your body uses to produce these hormones may be diminished. All right, and so the idea is if you supplement with tyrosine, if you give your body back tyrosine through supplementation form, then perhaps your body will have um, more substrate to produce these hormones. And that's the idea behind supplementation. Now, what's interesting is that your body, you don't necessarily need to consume tyrosine to get it. In fact, your body pr creates it from phenylalanine, which is another uh, amino acid. So you don't have to get too, too deep into this, but just realize that your body can become deficient in tyrosine from one of two ways. Either you're not consuming enough phenylalanine, which is a protein that you consume through your diet, or you are depleting the amount of tyrosine that you have because of stress or because of increased demand on hormone creation in your body. And so that's where, that, that's kind of the area that we're going to be focusing on because that's where things get really interesting. So essentially, it's possible to exhaust the amount of tyrosine that you have on your body by increasing the pressure to produce these hormones. So especially the adrenal hormones and then also thyroid hormone. So that's, that's sort of the basics of tyrosine, what it is, and, and why supplement, supplementation may be helpful. So let's talk a little bit about how it relates to your thyroid and your thyroid function. So first of all, uh, what's interesting is that uh, low tyrosine may result in decreased thyroid hormone levels, right? We, we just explained how that, how that can occur. Now, what's even more interesting, I think, is that some studies have shown that patients who have hypothyroidism, meaning low thyroid hormone, and hyperthyroidism, meaning high thyroid hormone, have dysregulated amounts of tyrosine in their bloodstream. And it works like this. If you have low thyroid hormone or hypothyroidism, the amount of tyrosine in your body tends to be lower, all right, in your bloodstream. And if you have hyperthyroidism, the amount of tyrosine that's in your serum tends to be elevated. All right, and so that kind of makes a little bit of sense because it's a substrate for these thyroid hormones. If you can't produce enough naturally, then it might be low. And if you produce too much, like in hyperthyroidism, then it might be high. Now, this, is, this, um, this should be correlated with other studies which show that taking um, thyroid medication, such as level thyroxine, increases the amount of tyrosine that your body metabolizes in the liver. So... Let me put this together for you so, so it makes sense. So first of all, we know that if you have hypothyroidism, your tyrosine levels may be low, okay? And those who have hypothyroidism, how do we treat them? We treat them by giving them thyroid hormone, right? So you already have low levels to begin with, and then I throw on thyroid medication on top of that, and what that does is it further depletes tyrosine because taking level thyroxine increases the metabolism of tyrosine in your body. So that's two ways in which people with hypothyroidism may benefit from using tyrosine, right? It, it, makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that taking tyrosine will help your thyroid function, and it also doesn't necessarily mean that if you have hyperthyroidism that you should avoid tyrosine. These are just, these are just some of the reasons why supplementation may be beneficial, because we know that if you give tyrosine to individuals with hypothyroidism, a lot of them notice improvement. So we're trying to explain why that might be. 
But as I say here, um, it's worth it's worth noting that your body naturally gets tyrosine in addition to to iodine, and those two um, nutrients are what your body uses to create thyroid hormone. So you probably do not want to take them apart. Like you can either, as long as you have normal iodine, it should be fine. But imagine a scenario in which you replete this reservoir of tyrosine and your body uses it to create more thyroid hormone, but you don't have enough iodine to match it. So you want to make sure that your iodine levels are optimal if you're going to be using it. So that's sort of the picture of L-tyrosine and, and thyroid hormone and why it helps. Now let's talk a little bit about the adrenal gland. So as I mentioned before, tyrosine is the precursor to epinephrine and norepinephrine. And those are, I mean, you know them as adrenaline, right? So when you get stressed out uh, or something intense happens in your life, your body responds by increasing um, blood sugar, increasing heart rate, you know, activating your skeletal muscles. Your body gets ready. It's that, that fight or flight response. Now, the problem is, and this has been shown, in fact, um, tyrosine supplementation is more studied in the realm of the adrenal world than it is in the thyroid world. Um, and it's been shown that using L-tyrosine can re increase your body's uh, ability to respond to stress. And this probably comes from the depletion effect that I was talking about earlier. So the idea is if you have too much stress on your body, your body is going to deplete the amount of tyrosine that's available. Because remember, there's a finite amount. Your body's going to deplete that amount by producing more epinephrine and norepinephrine. And then that might also be a way in which it steals tyrosine from your body to produce thyroid hormone. So this is why these two um, systems are connected, thyroid hormone and your adrenal gland. And then there's all sorts of studies that show that using tyrosine or L-tyrosine, I should say, for adrenals, like I said, helps improve cognition, helps reduce depression, um, helps increase your stress response. It's actually been well studied in, eh, I wouldn't say well, but it's been more studied in the realm of your adrenal gland. And we know that those two systems are connected. So the idea is, should you take L-tyrosine? Um, and I would say because it's relatively safe um, in high doses, I mean, people have taken as much as 20 grams per day uh, in the military in some studies, and they haven't had any negative side effects. It might be worth a, a simple trial, even if you're not sure if it'll work for you or not. But I've also created a list of, of people or, or situations that if you fall into, you might benefit from using it. So let's talk about those. So number one, those suffering from highly stressful situations for a prolonged period of time kind of goes without saying. Those with the symptoms of adrenal fatigue, those with known or suspected thyroid problems, specifically hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, those with burnout syndrome, um, those with other hormone imbalances which may impact your adrenals or your thyroid, those with depression or poor cognition, and then of course those with brain fog or difficulty concentrating. So you'll see here there's really a mix of, of symptoms that are associated with thyroid related problems and then also adrenal problems. And we know that those kind of tend to go together. So it makes sense that you have one or the, you want, you have one, you probably have some element of the other and vice versa. All right. So how to use tyrosine. I think that supplementing with tyrosine can be beneficial. However, in my experience, it's almost always better to use tyrosine in combination with other things. Okay, and so if you're using it for adrenal health, then I think you'll want to at least consider using it in combination with these things I have listed here. And if you're thinking about using it for thyroid health, then you'll probably want to use it in combination with these things I've listed here. This is just going to allow you to get the biggest bang for your buck. It's going to allow your body to provide uh, more of the, those precursors required for the creation of these hormones and so on. So just real, this, this is sort of a standard idea um, among other supplements that that you use for various problems. Like if you just use one supplement by itself, it's probably not going to be that effective because there are more things involved in the creation of hormones. There are more elements involved in, in uh, what causes stress and your stress response. It just makes more sense to, to apply these together. So we'll go over those real quick. So for adrenal health, uh, using using uh, L-tyrosine in combination with adrenal adaptogens and or glandulars is a great idea. These are things which further help that stress response. Activated, activated B vitamins, um, these are required for the creation of certain adrenal hormones, so they should probably go um, in tandem with, or you should take those in tandem with L-tyrosine. And then, of course, vitamin C. Vitamin C um, is highly concentrated in your adrenal glands, and it's a, a nutrient that's well known to be used for uh, treating adrenal fatigue. And then for your thyroid health, you have a couple of options here. So you have guggle extract, um, which is a potential uh, new, uh, uh, item that can help your body convert T4 to T3. Zinc and selenium, we've talked a lot about those in the past, so we won't go into those. And then of course, vitamin A, which helps your cellular sensitivity to thyroid hormone. And then of course, adrenal adaptogen. So I include those here. 
The reason is because you don't really have thyroid issues without also, you know, you're go if you have thyroid problems, you're going to have some element of adrenal related issues. It, just the way that your body works, the way that your body produces hormones, um, et cetera. So, um, anyway, I ho hopefully this was, was pretty helpful. As you'll see, um, just as an example, um, in my thyroid adrenal reset complex, I put uh, 175 milligrams of L-tyrosine in there, which is sufficient anywhere from 100 to uh, 500 milligrams is usually the amount that you need, or even 50 milligrams might be fine, along with a bunch of other things that you'll see here. And so this is just the the combination of nutrients that I think works the best for uh, those who have the combination of adrenal and thyroid problems. And this has worked well for a lot of people. So um, at the time, 123 reviews. So um, anyway, that's kind of the, uh, the way that you want to be thinking about this and the way that you want to be using it. So I know this went a little bit long, but hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions about supplementing with L-tyrosine or about other supplements that we've discussed here, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to, to get to them and to answer them. And otherwise, I hope you guys found this helpful, and I will see you in the next one.